Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Efficient Design Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In the previous episode, I was thinking about trying to get the science necessary to unlock the Rapier Engine, and we we're pretty close to that, but I've uh, had second thoughts. In particular, I am aware that in my 0.25 series, I'm also attempting to unlock the Rapier Engine, and that that's a major goal in that series for the design that I've got there for a space plane. So I'm a little bit hesitant to go in that direction. I'm also a little bit hesitant to go into the RTG direction because in the previous episode I said that I wanted to do something completely different and basically unlocking an RTG means uh, making a probe of some kind uh, especially after I ran out of electric charge in the previous episode. So yeah, uh, I think both of those plans while, while noble in their aspirations uh, might have been a little bit misguided, especially since I wanted to do something different. And so I have come up with a plan uh, to revive something I have done previously, way, way back when, like more than a year ago, in a very old version of KSP. And in fact, uh, something that featured in one of my earliest videos. So uh, with that thought in mind, I am going to unlock these advanced aerodynamic parts because I sorely need the wing connector in particular that will be very helpful. So uh, I'm going to unlock those now and so we're short a bit of science but I trust that we're going to be using it for a noble purpose. So with that let me turn to the space plane hangar and we will see what I can cook up. And voila! Behold the X-Wing! And again this is not a completely new design this is something I have worked on previously thought about uh, for a while and so this is not going to be a complete surprise whether this works or not um, and if you want to check out my, one of my earliest videos where I have an X-Wing uh, that is still up so anyway uh, it is not a traditional X-Wing obviously the cockpit would be ahead of the wings in the normal X-Wing design but this has a lot of very positive features First of all, uh, having the cockpit in the back is something I am in favor of in space planes in general. One thing you'll find is that when you have the cockpit in front and the wings way back is that the center of mass shifts way forward as the fuel drains from the tanks and while the center of lift remains uh, far back. And that's of course because of the cockpit's mass. So you end up having a uh, mass way out in front and uh, no way of counteracting that. Now normally you'd also have the engines in the back but uh, the wings are already positioned so that the engines in the back are you know uh, they're usually close to the center of lift because you know you have a delta wing design or something like that. So I like having the capsule in the back, the cockpit in the back and in this case it is a uh, it can be uh, detached from the rest of the vehicle in the case of an emergency uh, in fact, it can dock on its own. It's got RCS on its own, uh, just in case. Um, parachutes, of course. So, yeah, it's a somewhat autonomous thing if necessary. So, so that's the idea there. Uh, there are a lot of other ideas involved. Let me just uh, show you center mass and center of lift while I'm at it. So that's what that looks like. Uh, something you might be wondering is about how it stays steady because while well, the main body is way off the ground here and of course uh, I had to be very clever with the landing gear here and very key to have the back landing gear very close to the center of mass but still behind it because that way the craft can rotate on the runway otherwise uh, you'll be waiting for the end of the runway to try and uh, tilt up and get some lift so there's that. Um, another thing you'll notice is it's a little bit tricky uh, if you don't want a huge uh, rudder of some kind, some vertical stabilizer, uh, to actually control the yaw. And so I've got, uh, well of course the ailerons are partially controlling yaw as well. There's almost no avoiding that. Uh, I mean, of course I could tweak it and say don't control yaw, but there's no point. Uh, so I've got these winglets. There's these two down here and these two going like this to control yaw and pitch and roll. I, I haven't really bothered to be specific. This is in fair mirror space so I, I'm not going to tweak those too much. I think they'll work out just fine. And um, this tank is not used. It's got fuel but it's actually to counterbalance the cockpit mainly. 
This tank is also not used, but that's uh, as reserve fuel, just in case I need to some some more liquid fuel, which is possible. And uh, though it'll be a little bit tricky to transfer it out here, come to think of it. Um, I'll have to think about that later. I've uh, already balanced this so that when the fuel drains from these tanks, really the rockets just drain from uh, this center tank here and their own individual tanks, and that's all they've got to work with. So this has to get up to pretty high speeds beforehand. And there's a lot of balancing that has been done. For instance, uh, this is only half tank, half tank. And uh, this RCS tank is halfway. And uh, we have lights and everything, so you know, you can see I've done a pretty thorough job. Even got some supplementary intakes down here. Of course, I haven't done, uh, I could have intake spam these things to all sorts of ways, uh, covered them in intakes even, but I haven't done that. So just uh, three down the middle down there, and otherwise uh, the normal ram air intakes here. Okay. So uh, we've got some solar panels, but not too many, but that should be fine. And yeah, I think that covers everything. Uh, the reaction wheel in front is partly actually to keep the balance. Uh, this, is, this is one of the things I've been uh, trying to keep the center of mass right there pretty much uh, throughout the whole flight profile, and that's part of the trick. All right, so... Uh, with that, I think we can fly. It can be probe controlled. It's got a probodobodyne here, but I have been reminded uh, due to recent events that uh, test pilots are very brave and noble people. And so I will not have, well, I, I think uh, I'll give someone else a chance to do this. Uh, we, uh, we need courage and a little stupidity. Richmore has been out there before. Uh, but I can't think of somebody better, so let's go with Richmore. Very experienced uh, pilot, of course, Richmore. And we will see how he does. Got parachutes just in case, so uh, we do have an abort method. But uh, there's still some questions about this. Uh, I have not flown it to orbit yet. Uh, let, let me make that clear. Even though it's based on a previous design of mine and uh, all that, it, it has been changed from that design, and I have not flown this version to orbit. Okay? Uh, oh yes, uh, to keep the wing stable, struts. It must have struts. Alright, with that, let's launch. Okay, there we saw the little flop of the stuff as gravity pulled it all down. Uh, I will want this back, of course. It costs 100,000 funds, so not a cheap vehicle by any stretch of the imagination. And the goal here is orbit and return. That's it. Um, this, when it's remote controlled, it's capable of rescuing a Kerbal. A Kerbal can get inside the cockpit then, and we could just send it up remote controlled. So that's a possibility. But otherwise, I just want to see how it flies. Okay, and uh, I already everybody probably already knows that this doesn't have much lift. It just has barely enough. So it's going to be tilting up at a high angle just to uh, keep going up. And we all know that. So uh, here we go. Oh, uh, important point, you cannot add brakes and uh, rev the jet engines up, otherwise this will definitely nose down. That is not an option. You may, <laughs> If you're going to copy this design or try something similar out yourself, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, no uh, engaging brakes and, uh, and doing stuff like that. Okay, here we go. Yes, we have lift. Very good, very good. Wings look stable. Very nice, actually. I don't know how how well it'll do on turns, but we're trying to get to orbit, so let's just go up there. I wonder what that is. Gravity probe. Oh, it must be some launch debris. Huh. something I've forgotten about for some reason. Oh, let's get resources up. So you can see the monopropellant tanks are not full. We could fill them up. Uh, of course, there's plenty of space and uh, they wouldn't change the center mass too much, I don't think. There's uh, these two here as well for the cockpit uh, escape system. Uh, 
Of course, if the rockets are firing when the cockpit tries to jettison, in theory, the cockpit would be fried by the exhaust. So uh, it's really only good to separate it when the rockets are not on. And in general, it, it'd probably be fried anyway, when you think about it. It has to have some pretty serious thermal resistance to be placed here when the rockets are there. That's the downside to having the cockpit in the back like this. But since default Kerbal Space Program does not model heat like that, it's not too bad. Now, I uh, deliberately omitted oxidizer from this tank, as you can see. Though we're not really using the liquid fuel, I, I need to check out the liquid fuel oxidizer balance. That's something that I'm doing as we head up. Could add something heavier on the front. Maybe another, uh, instead of having this tank here, which we're not using, could have another cockpit up front and uh, do manned rescues. So that's a possibility. It's interesting to have the docking port in the back. Of course, I think uh, Dream Chaser, the Sierra Nevada Corporation's little uh, mini shuttle, had the docking port in the back as well. It's a convenient way to go about things. We don't have the inline docking port yet. I haven't unlocked it, so we don't have that possibility. Otherwise, uh, obviously, we I guess we could have probably put it up here. Though the engines and the wings might get in the way of it trying to dock with anything that way. This does have uh, absolute clearance. Okay, well, I'll uh, catch up with you once we get to uh, high altitude for when the transition between the jets and the rockets occurs. Okay, we're at 15 kilometers. I'm going to start uh, leveling off a bit try and get speed rather than altitude as the in intake air is going to be depleting. Uh, one of the unfortunate things of course IVA view is completely useless here and uh, yeah another thing on my wish list uh, as as KSP gets into beta is of course uh, raster prop monitor like multifunction displays in the cockpits those would be nice I, I don't know why the Space Plane Plus parts got added without actual multifunction displays, but those will be essential, I think. So, yeah, just a note. Alright, here we go. We've got to try for a thousand meters per second before lighting the rockets and then uh, as intake air gets to 0 0.24 I'll turn off the jets. I'm not going to push this thing. Well, flying in a straight line it's been quite stable. Though uh, you can see the gap between the the angle of attack and the prograde vector. It definitely does not have much lift. At least not with its current mass which uh, while well, we can uh, we can take a look uh, 46 tons let me quickly get this up always important to get the nav ball up in map view just in case okay here we go approaching the point for rocket ignition this is uh, a lot closer than I thought between the intake air getting into trouble territory and 1000 meters per second I was hoping the jets could take me to 1200 ish but it is well let's see we're carrying a lot of extra mass though I'll hold off until point two maybe I don't want to risk a flame out though. Point two. Okay. That's as much as I want to go this time. Maybe uh, next, uh, on a subsequent uh, flight we can uh, test a little bit more when it comes to the intake air, but for now let's just keep it safe. Oh, uh, the fuel 
reading here is deceptive. It reads half the fuel as the center tank, which they all share, and the other half is their own fuel. So, uh, not particularly good to trust that. I'm going to move this fuel forward to uh, just the center of mass forward. Okay, let me uh, shut down the engines for now. I think we can coast for a bit. Okay, let's see where we're at. Uh, okay, well, we need to go a little bit higher. Let's let's try for a hundred kilometer orbit. Probably, if we're gonna rescue a Kerbal, that's where the Kerbal's gonna be, or even worse places. Okay, well, so far this has been very good, but it's the landing that's the tricky part. Reentry with something like this, I don't know. Uh, I have not done such a thing in a very long time. So from a design perspective, this is very, very sound, but uh, it's also not very efficient because it's carrying a lot more structural weight thanks to uh, empty tanks than it then would be preferable. So that's the downside to it. All in the name of keeping the center of mass pretty consistent throughout the flight. Okay, well that's a pretty good average. Alright, we're in orbit. But uh, now comes the tough part. Okay, well, here goes nothing. 100,000 funds, and Richmore Kerman, more importantly, though. Uh, he can possibly escape even if the, if the 100,000 funds go down the drain. Mm, a little bit earlier than I'd like to be hitting the atmosphere, but let's see. We might have a long flight ahead of us if this goes badly. Gonna switch off the rockets now. Oh, huh. One of the rockets is not properly action grouped. That's strange. Symmetry fails me again, but at least I didn't have a problem with it this time. And okay, well those are properly symmetrical. You know, I just thought of it. What might be interesting is uh. X-wing launcher craft. Uh, we could take the docking port off and just attach a rocket below it and try and send it to Lathe or something. I suppose while we still have some fuel we can try and boost the situation up a bit. Okay we should be within operational parameters for the jets. Let's level off first though. And Okay, we're on our way home. We have the fuel for it. Just need to keep this thing stable over the dreaded mountains where I have so often come crashing down. Uh, I guess we should uh, target uh, the landing beacon. Even though it's not the runway, it's actually the landing pad. Uh, don't really need to go up as such. First time really trying to maneuver this thing. Trying to be gentle. Okay. Okay, side slip.
gonna add thrust before this thing gets a little bit out of hand. And I am not gonna cut thrust while we're passing over these mountains. That has been the death of me way too many times. Okay, runway in sight. Now this thing seemed to have lift at around 80 meters per second, so... So I'm going to somewhat rely on that benchmark. This is where not having particularly proper yaw controls hurts a bit. Okay, gear down. Got to be interesting trying to make a landing with this landing gear. Lots of side slip. Wish I had far to tell me when that sort of thing was going to happen with a design. But it would probably hate me for this design in the first place, so probably a futile thing. Still very high. Come on, come on, come on. Down, down you go. Down. Be good now. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I've got lift! How did I get lift? That's not right. Uh oh. Uh. <laughs> This is... Ow, 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 ow. Wow, how did I get lift at 50 meters per second? And wow, this... Uh-oh. I'm still getting... I'm... I'm... Oh, crud. Ah. Uh... What the heck was that? Okay, before anything else crazy happens, let's recover vessel. Well... <laughs> The obvious statement to make about that last minute spinny thing was of obviously a complete lack of yaw control, uh, but it was still a little bit weird. I, I didn't feel that much lack of control throughout the flight that it should have been doing that on the ground. And also the little bounce back up at such a low speed was sort of surprising. So we lost a couple of jets, I think, and about uh, 10,000 funds. A little bit of uh, refinement clearly necessary for this, but Richmore survived. That's good, and we got most of our, our funds back. Uh, let me think about what I want to do next. I decided to check out what, uh, what Gene Kerman had to offer here. <laughs> Stack separator orbiting Tylo. That's ambitious stuff right there. Test a stack separator orbiting Tylo. That's very tempting. The, the funds are huge, right? This is serious funding. And then uh, the, testing the engine cluster on an escape trajectory out of Jewel. That means you have to carry it all the way there. Wow. Lots of science and lots of funding, though. Um, uh, probably uh, just to do something a little bit more tame. Testing the ion engine in flight over Kerbin sounds like a good idea. We're gonna get science data around uh, Jewel eventually, and it looks like Tylo is a thing. So let's get that as well. Plan a flag on Tylo, not sure. Plan a flag on Duna should be done soon. Okay. Explore Bop. Oh, okay. Let's do the ion engine thing quickly. Okay, I think this is sufficient to do the trick. It's just uh, just a 
mid-atmosphere test of the ion engine for some strange reason. Uh, let's take it out to the launch pad. Ion engines aren't really for the atmosphere, but of course when has that sort of logic ever stopped a Kerbal? Okay, we don't have too much by way of reaction wheel control, we just have what this uh, what this little probe has, but hopefully the gimbling on the engine is sufficient. Alright, uh, here we go. Actually, let's focus on our contract. Oh, staging is a little bit off. Okay. Test complete. Okay. Let's shut that down. Time warp a little bit. So uh, even though this is somewhat of a lackluster ending to the episode, I think I'll end with this because I want to turn to revenge against Jewel or the other planets anyway in the next episode. So I'm going to try more interplanetary journeys in the next episode and uh, that will be the focus there. So, uh, but I, I don't want to start that off, start a mission like that in this episode. So, I'll uh, end this episode with this test, and then we'll see what happens in the next episode. Let's see where we land. I did a horrible job as usual. Horizontal landings I can do. Vertical landings, I don't know. There was once a monolith somewhere here, wasn't there? Is that still around? Can't quite see it. Was that it? That might be it. Of all the hard to spot Easter eggs, there it is. In my previous experience, it seems like we don't get any extra science for uh, taking sort of a sample of it or anything like that, but I haven't tried it in recent versions. I doubt there's any particular science though. Anyway, uh, let's recover this. So simple as that was, we got uh, well, we got our funds back um, minus two percent, but uh, we also got the actual experiment value of 112, I think it was 112 science. Uh, so that was a good deal, and uh, yeah. So I hope you enjoyed this episode with the X-wing and everything. I'll try more ambitious uh, plane projects trying to make planes without the rapier engine since I'm going to be aiming for the rapier engine in the other series. So we'll try and stick to non-rapier like aircraft uh, designs and maybe that'll be a thing now because uh, this is the last the last version of KSB that have this particular selection of airplane parts and it might be good to uh, continue exploring what we can do with them. So, but anyway, next time I want to try an interplanetary journey, perhaps to rack up some funds and, of course, some science uh, so that uh, we can unlock more things, but uh, more, more funds because uh, our planes are going to cost a lot. So, anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.